And now it's time for Farnsworth's Fables, written and narrated by Mr. Reginald Q. Farnsworth. Actually, Frank, I was hoping if you'd indulge me in trying something a little different for my segment. Uh, what do you mean? Well, I have this little playlet I wrote a couple of years ago that I found last week while cleaning out one of my file cabinets. I was thinking of performing it with some good friends of mine on your show. Well, this is a uh, kind of last minute. Then again, you haven't let me down yet. It might be a little hard on the sound people, but I think it's doable. Excellent! Now, before we begin, I'd like for you to meet my co-stars. This is Eloise Fairchild. Hello. And this is Judith Vanderwoodson. How do you do? Where's Isaac? I have the introduction written out for him. Right here. Here you go. Now, we'll just take our places. Uh, Frank, what exactly is going on here? Just roll with it, Isaac. We got ten minutes to kill. Okay. Isaac, we are ready. Okay. <clears throat> WJMU is now proud to present to you the world premiere of Reginald Q. Farnsworth's Wendy. And cue the opening music. I am the god of hellfire, and I bring you fire. Wrong music. It's the button next to that one. I'm home, darling. Hello, Melvin. How was your day? The doorman just told me I have a butt like a cupcake. Well, that's rather disquieting. Say, don't you think you ought to close the door? Oh, of course. How silly of me. I'll get on that. Here I am, closing the door. Ow, ow, ow! Oh, dear. I seem to have hit a rat on the head there. A rat? That's absolutely unacceptable. Fret not, my dear. I shall have the door closed shortly. Here I go. <laughs> Damn cyclists and their loud, distracting horns. Nevertheless, I will close the door. There. That should have been done at the beginning of our conversation, but there you have it. Now, darling, how was your day? Marvelous, my love. Simply marvelous. Mother stopped by today and said that father's getting much better. The doctor says that soon he'll be able to eat pomegranate again. That is is marvelous. Oh, by the way, a woman left a message saying she'd be by to take care of some business with you. That's odd. I'm not planning any big business dealings this week. Did she leave her name by any chance? Yes. She said her name was Wendy Harbin. Oh, no! Wendy Harbin, you say? Yes. Why? Oh, it can't be. It mustn't be. It simply can't. Whatever is wrong, Melvin? There is an aspect of my life that I hoped I could keep behind me, that I would never have to tell you. Wendy Harbin is a woman to whom I was once engaged. One night, I caught her in the arms of another man and I called off the engagement. She swore that night that one day, when I least suspected it, she would hunt me down and kill me. Oh dear, and she'll be here at any second. Hark, is that the doorbell? We really ought to get that fixed. Never mind, I'll get it. Here I am, opening the door. Oh, for the love of... Let's give this another go. Oh no, it's her! Save that for one of your crappy soap opera parodies. Anyway, it's her! And she has a gun! Yes, Melvin. I've come as I have promised to those many years ago. I suppose you're going to try and kill me now, Wendy? Not necessarily. I know somewhere deep in your heart of hearts you still love me. So I make this proposal. Marry me. Let's live the life we were supposed to live all these years. You mean the life you threw away when you placed a cuckold's horns upon my brow? No, thank you, Wendy. In case you haven't noticed, I'm currently happily married to the love of my life. You leave me no choice then, Melvin. If I can't have you, no other woman can. Uh, hold on. Blast! My gun seems to be inoperative. Alas, I shall put it back in my purse. Now, Melvin. Oh, dear. That was my favorite purse, too. Anyway, as I was saying, Melvin, if you do not marry me, I shall kill you. Somehow. At some date in the foreseeable future. 
I'm sorry, but I could never leave my beloved Gladys. I thought so. Very well. There's no point in carrying on with this farce. I shall simply kill myself. Now, Wendy, don't be rash. Yes, let's sit down and talk this out. Hmm. I suppose I have some time in my schedule. Good. Let's sit. <coughs> oh, dear, I've stepped on a rat. There really ought not to be any rats in this building. We keep it very tidy. Let's just sit down already. There. Now, Wendy, there is no need to end your life simply because you can't get something you want. Why, if everyone did that, not one of us would be alive right now. Besides, a man is such a frivolous thing to end one's life over. There are so many things in life far more important. You don't understand. I love him more than I have ever loved anything or shall ever love anything. <coughs> Hawk, what was that? Whatever that was, it wasn't in the script. Reggie, dear, don't break character. I'm sorry, ladies, but I insist on finding out what the issue is before we go on with the play. Why was that uncalled-for noise made? Oh, of all the... The sound man's fallen asleep on the board! Oh, that is it! That is it! I will not continue to perform with such an unprofessional crew. Frank, call me back when you fired that god-awful sound man. Wait a second. This isn't our regular sound person. It's an imposter in a cheesy mask. Now let's find out who you really are. Egad! It's my old nemesis from college, Werner Spletsnos. Sp Spletz... Blah. Spletz... <clears throat> Whatever. No doubt here to sabotage my little radio play out of envy. It's Platz, Tursa! Wouldn't I if would have gotten away with it too, for it not for my crippling cheapness? Oh, why, oh, why didn't I buy a proper mask? Get him! <laughs> well, that uh, certainly was... something. <laughs> <laughs>